80% of early childhood leaders don't like conflict. Because of that, I worked up for years, and I've got it down out of five principles and five steps. And here they are. It's for the person that doesn't like to confront somebody. By the way, if you look at the Latin root of the word confront, it doesn't mean you have to be disrespectful. It doesn't mean you have to be inappropriate. It doesn't mean you have to like be mean-spirited. What it means is confront means to bring people face to face. So that's what these five principles and five steps are about. Principle number one is focus on the person's behavior, not on the person. If Here's my concrete example. Jasmine comes in at 6.45 on Monday, 7 o'clock on Tuesday, and 8 o'clock this morning, I can say, Jasmine, you are late. And you know what she's going to say to me? I was on time all last week. So what I'm going to do is just focus on her behavior. And now that combines with principle number two, be concrete and specific. So if I say, Jasmine, you were late, that's not concrete. That's not specific. I need to say real common sense. Jasmine, when you came yes, uh, Monday at 6.45, Tuesday at 7, and today at 8 a.m., that was inappropriate. OK, so principle number three is don't allow yourself to get hooked. This is why I call it problem solving to prevent power struggles. When I'm holding a staff member accountable, it's uncomfortable to be held accountable. And so what the staff member might want to do is to try to make it about somebody else. So uh, she might want to hook me into a power struggle. If I go there, then I've lost the whole point. Because as a leader, I need to keep my eyes on the prize of professionalism. So I'm not going to let her hook me, OK? And the next thing is, and this is big, I expect re adults to take responsibility for themselves. Sometimes, as a leader back in the early days, what I used to think was that it was my, my job to solve everybody's problems. It was my job to be mom. It was my job to take care of people. I mean, we are in a nurturing profession. That's all wonderful. Being nurturing, being kind, being altruistic, being compassionate is wonderful. But if I am doing someone else's job for her, then that's not modeling for the children what the children need to see. Did you know there's a recent study that says children learn more by observing a teacher's interaction with another child than the, the child learns from even the best of lesson plans. So the fourth thing I'm going to do is to hold each staff member responsible for being an adult, because that's what children need to see. And the last thing is, I'm going to, the last principle is, I'm going to know what I stand for. And I'm going to keep my eyes on the prize of quality care. So even if I'm uncomfortable confronting someone, I need to remind myself it's not about me. It's not even about you. It's about how can we have the most professional environment for the sake of the children. I also like to say to directors, look, carry a Q-tip in your pocket. Now, why do I say that? You know what a Q-tip is. And if you need to squeeze it, squeeze it. Q-tip stands for quit taking it personally. A lot of times, we get hooked and blame ourselves, or 70% of women tend to take things personally. 44% of men do. That can be a challenge in terms of effective confrontation. So the principles are be factual, be concise, hold the line in terms of what professionalism is. Here are the five steps to holding a staff member accountable, effect, especially if you are conflict avoidant and it's real hard for you to confront someone. Just hold on to these steps. They're like life preservers in troubled waters. Number one, state the inappropriate behavior and be factual and concrete. So Jasmine, when you arrive Monday at 645, when you arrive Tuesday at 7 AM, when you arrive, arrive this morning at 8 AM, that was inappropriate. End of story. Just be factual. That's it. Now I move right on to step number two, which is to tell her what is the appropriate behavior. Now, a lot of times, we expect people to be like ourselves. We expect people to know what's appropriate. But you know what? Not everybody does. People are at all stages of staff development. You know Lillian Katz's work and Paula Jordy Bloom's work on stages of staff development. Some folk are at the level of survivors. They're just getting through the day. We want to help them build up to becoming 
mature professionals. So number one, give her the facts, just the facts, ma'am. Number two, tell her what's appropriate. Jasmine, you need to be here by 6.30 every morning so you can be in that classroom ready to go for the sake of those wonderful children. Now, this is a big thing. We used to teach the sandwich method. Sandwich method, as you probably know, means if you gotta confront somebody, say something really nice, and then put the meat in the middle, the trouble, and then say something nice. So here's how it would go. Jasmine, you're a wonderful teacher. Oh my goodness, the children love you, the families love you. We have a little problem in that you're a little bit late sometimes, but you know you're a wonderful teacher. Jasmine's gonna go away thinking she's a wonderful teacher, never mind the problem with being late. So step number three is, don't ask the staff member, how can I help you? Because that's like spreading out a, out a welcome mat where Jasmine's gonna expect me to, to fix the situation. Step number three is to ask, for me to ask Jasmine, Jasmine, what will you do to make sure you get here on time? Now that's when Jasmine might try to hook me because it's hard for her to accept that. So she might say, well, you know what? Marissa was late yesterday. How come you're not calling Marissa in? That's easy. Jasmine, your information is confidential. Any other staff member's information is confidential. We are just talking about your behavior now. So what does she say next? I noticed you were late this morning. If she's got a point, I have a whiteboard behind me and I make a note of that. I say, thank you, but right now, Jasmine, we're focusing on your behavior. Now the next thing she might do, I'm not gonna do this too much, but have you ever had a staff member that goes, <laughs> I'm not going to keep going there, but I love the baby so much and you never, you never praise me. I'm almost 62 years old. I have a box of Kleenex now. And when people do that, I say, you know, I'm, I, I understand that you're feeling, you have some strong feelings right now. When you're ready to get back, we need to, to, we need to talk about this professionally for the sake of the children. Sometimes we have people yelling at us. That can be scary. What I do in that case is say, you need to, to step out of the room right now and come back. I have had people yell at me. I've had other directors tell me that people yell at them. It's hard for people to be confronted, even though we're doing it respectfully. By the way, Aretha Franklin got it right. R-E-S-P-E-C-D is what the NACI Code of Ethics is all about. So when someone yells at me, is that respectful? respectful? I don't think so. It's not respectful to me and it's not respectful to her. So what I say to her is, we're gonna take a break Come back in here when you are ready to discuss this problem professionally. Sometimes I have to give the person the rest of the day and I say, you come back in tomorrow morning. We will meet at 8 a.m. Come in here ready to share with me what you're going to do to take responsibility to change your behavior. So step number three is, what will you do to take responsibility for changing this behavior. Step number four is big because Jasmine's probably gonna try to get me off track. I don't wanna go there. If I get in a power struggle, the whole point is lost. So I keep saying, Jasmine, what are you gonna do to change your behavior? Now, step number four is to persist until we come up with a workable solution. So Jasmine finally says, okay, I agree. I'll get there by 6.30 each day. But then I, don't, I can't let it go at that. I have to move on to step number five. And step number five is putting into place a plan for enhanced supervision whereby Jasmine is clear about what's gonna happen over the next week to make sure she's doing what she says she's gonna do. And not only that, legally I have to tell Jasmine what are the consequences of her behavior if she fails to do what she said she was gonna do. So what I'm gonna to say to her is, Jasmine, here's a concrete example. Jasmine, we will meet one week from today at eight o'clock in the morning. Tyrone is gonna cover your classroom. At that point, we're gonna look back at this week to see if you were able to get here every day on time, if you chose to get here every day on time. Now, in the meantime, if there's one day that she's, at meantime, Jasmine, I'm gonna be checking in with you each day. Now, if there's one day when she's late, I'm gonna call her in right then and there. This is all, by the way, the, the principles of progressive discipline. What, what I'm talking about here in these five steps is all legal. It all is in compliance with what the courts call making a conscientious rescue effort 
to help an employee change to come up to a standard of professionalism. They also call it enhanced supervision. So step five is making a clear plan for follow-up and also giving the employee notice about what the consequences are if she doesn't change. So I'm gonna to say to Jasmine, the next step, Jasmine, is you will be put on probation if you don't get here on time every day. Those five steps, if I follow them, I give the staff member the choice. The choice is you can be an adult and model for children adult behavior or you can choose not to take responsibility for yourself, in which case there are consequences. The consequence is that you'll be put on probation, and if it happens again, the next consequence is it's time for you to leave, you're fired.